they're just where they are and they have been preserved and kept as they should be. And they are national um, monuments. People go in to pay, to have a look at it, to connect and to remember. And I think with um, historical monuments, they remind us of the journey that we have come from, where we are and where we are going, and it's a story of humanity. And I think that's one of the big things that we fail to realize, that even though we're in the now and we think we can learn from mistakes of the past, and it also shows us and demonstrates it's a record of how, how, how resilient we are. In Sierra Leone in particular, Sierra Leoneans today, even in, uh, through our um, modern history, we are very resilient. It's one of the um, greatest strengths. And when you look at the history, you can see that it just hasn't happened over, um, overnight. We, and we have all these things to remind us as, and, and of our core and to keep us together. These monuments keep us together. And they are so much more than just, you know, bricks and mortar. Um, I'm an old girl of the annual school that's recently um, been the subject of a lot of national debate regarding as to what um, should happen to the, to the school grounds. And there's a lot of debate and a national outcry and um, people are thinking, oh, it's an abomination, we should not, that the school should not be touched and Others saying, oh, yes, we should move forward. It's, um, um, you know, we're in a modern world now. It's out of date and that sort of thing. But what we're afraid, we afraid to um, realize, and it's not just the Annie Walsh School, not too far from Annie Walsh, they are, there's the um, old Fabi College building, which we have let in Klein Town, which again has gone to, 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 to the dogs, I would say. And um, there are other um, buildings as well in that area that have just not been used to see their, not been used to their full potential, which is a shame. Um, I remember growing up. I grew up in East End and along um, Campbell Street. So lots of wooden houses, lots of wooden houses. And um, these houses, again, everyone opting for more modern structures and um, them not being modernized or preserved. And these are, have tremendous potential. Along Hill Station, those old colonial houses, we could preserve those, but a lot of them now are left. They're hardly, when I went to Fita the last time, there are hardly any of them that are still habitable, and they are just left to um, uh, um, um, destroy. Mm. And what you could have, especially in that area, is, an, is a resort, for instance. I don't see why Sierra Leone cannot, why Freetown cannot have a resort of the, and the, um, for those colonial villages be recreated. And I bet you, you would have a lot of people. There would be British people knocking on the door for the experience. People travel for um, um, experiences. And that is a journey, uh, you know, an area we have yet untapped. People, um, I, I go into museums, even here in, in London, and they recreate those 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 events that happened. You can have the the Jack the Ripper walk in London, where the 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 the, the um, London of that period is actually recreated, and you can know what it felt like you, to 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 walk through the streets of London in the, uh, um, during those dangerous periods. You can have any experience that you you like, and these are areas that we mm. are not. We are not um, um, uh, um, tapping into, and they could bring a lot of income. Again, um, having some place like the Annual School Girls as a museum where you recreate the the, 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 um, the classroom. The history of the Annual, for instance, is so uh, um, uh, um, 
interesting and amazing of how the um, old school, was, of how the um, missionaries came and what was behind, what the, what the story, what the logic was, and how it got to that size. There's a rich history behind that. It could be recreated. We could have, we could see the the actual journey of female education through the times recreated in those buildings. And people want to see these things. They will come to see these things. <laughs> and we're just not okay. uh, um, um, utilizing it. The old Frobe College okay. building in Kleintown, crying out loud, it was the Athens of West Africa. Recreate that. Recreate when all people from the from other West African countries were coming, it would not only bring in, um, um, attract Western um, experience-seeking tourists, Africans who want to see, who are looking for a sense of purpose and looking for meaning, would also come and see these places where maybe their great-grandfathers or their grandparents studied and what it meant to them. We in Sierra Leone has been a spring, education in Sierra Leone was a springboard for a lot, for, for the other West African countries. And there are those people, they will be telling the stories in their countries, but they don't have a place to, 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 to bring their children to come back to, to come and have a look, to, 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 to remember. So these places have tremendous um, uh, um, um, potential. The city of Freetown, <coughs> so much history. Let's talk about the educational history. Freetown was a colony created for freed slaves. Where is it? Where is it? These days in the United States, there's a lot of um, um, awareness of um, African Americans thinking we want to know our roots, we want to know the stories, and all that sort of thing. You're having move, people, they're doing movies like Django Unchained, The Help, that's talking about the slave history. Sierra Leone is so big in that story and yet we have nothing in Sierra Leone itself okay, yeah. to, okay. that we yeah. can show to people, that we could show to the world and people want to see this, they want to understand and we have we have the whole Sengba Pierce story but what is there in Sierra Leone that to anyone who has seen the Sengba Pierce story would want to come back to that we could show them that, yeah, this is where it happened. We, we are really, really, really missing out. And we are talking <coughs> about a country that, you know, we say we want income. We're always begging. We're always begging, yet we have all these unutilized resources in front of us just lying to waste. We're not doing anything about it. And we keep putting out the begging bowl say we need aid. Well, we don't. Let's just use what we have and utilize it. And this is one area that we are not even touching, and its potential is massive. And um, so okay, that's my view you. on the um, income potential. Thank you, Madam Karim um, uh, You highlighted that very serious. That this, these are some of the challenges you face. Not failing to understand exactly the value of this monument, you know, uh, historic memory, the value they have, what they contribute. Uh, they provide strong evidence of our past. We fail to keep them in order. And also, like you're saying, they could be a good, very good cash machine. Revenue, you know, they could bring in, bring in revenue. Uh, Professor Arthur Abraham, um, in order for us to preserve what we have, our monuments, our historical sites, and our built heritage. Is there any need for a new legal and regulatory framework to cover the selection, preservation, and, restora and restoration of monuments? Because you, you've dealt with this subject in and out, upside down. Is there any need for a new law, for a regulatory framework, legal and regulatory framework? To cover selection, preservation, and restoration of our monuments. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Madhu. Um, yeah. um, let me just say that when Leslie contacted me to join the program, I initially declined. I said, because I've done so much in this area, I don't want it to appear like a matter of self-promotion because I don't need to promote myself 
anymore. It's over. I don't have a future. I have a past. And I said, I don't want you to appear like I'm also complaining about everything. But, I mean, I will just refer the listeners to two critical publications that I made. One way back in 1978, and I think everybody knows about that, Cultural Policy in Sierra Leone, which I did for UNESCO, in which I dealt with a lot of issues, policy options, directions, and everything. And then I published another work, um, Heritage Assets of Sierra Leone, in 1999, that was published in a book edited by Vladmark called um, In Search of Heritage um, by the Robert Gordon University in Scotland. And again, there I gave summary after summary because I saw this in a much broader context that I call heritage. Well, heritage is also culture. And even this much vaunted and whatever it is, ecotourism, yes, because even the ecosystem is part of our heritage. So that's just one little bit, but it's what people see and that is what uh, they promote. Coming back to the question now directly, I am not aware that there is a, an official policy framework. Um, since I left Sierra Leone um, in the late 90s due to the war, um, I do know that before then there were two abortive attempts to use my book for UNESCO in order to create um, a policy that would be adopted by government, even though I was not invited to any of those um, committees that were set up to deal with it. So I'm not aware that there is a policy framework now, and so you would pardon my ignorance if I proceed on that premise. So really, really, really what we need above everything else is a policy framework. A policy framework it's like a budget. The budget um, is a tool that guides you into how you allocate, appropriate, and use your resources. That, that's why you, you come back to audit. So we, we, we need this policy framework to guide us. But the way I see things going generally in Sierra Leone in the past and even now one place opens up and everybody rushes there. There is no framework guiding that is saying, look, there are just too many, um, too many elements in this process that we need to distribute whatever resources we have um, among them. Um, the, 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 the issue of uh, preservation actually brings me back again to national consciousness, which in terms of the interest of the country and putting Sierra Leone before selfish interests, is very, very minimal in Sierra Leone. When Governor de Zoc Hall was commissioning the present Sierra Leone Museum in 1955, he mentioned in his speech that one of the reasons for setting it up was to develop a sense of national pride. And he went on to say, even an illiterate person walking in will take a look at the artifacts that there are, seek explanations, and live with a sense of pride in his country's history. Well, those are the colonialist people. What have we done apart from Dr. Eastmont? The Monuments and Relics Commission, I extensively examined the structure of organization and made recommendations about how to do it. So I really don't want to, um, to, to repeat that here. But there is need to restructure, reorganize, um, come out with a framework that um, sets a proper organization um, lines of control and collaboration and command and so on and so forth. That is important we, for us to, 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 to move instead of allowing everyone to move um, in any direction 
um, that just um, interest them. So, um, yes, 